Morning, Dr. Julie. Good morning. I'm fixing your hair. You're looking good today. Oh, We're sweatshirted out today. This is kind of funny. I, I, I feel like I'm slumming and you feel normal. Hey. It's, it's not mean. It's just, this, is, this is the normal Julie that I'm used to seeing on the weekends and Fridays. Sweatshirt. Look cute. So today we're talking about money mindset and people's relationships with money. Love it. Right? So the title of today's podcast is Keeping Up with the Benjamins. Welcome back to the Prime Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Skip Weiss, the sweatshirt chiropractor today. And I have, as usual, Dr. Julie Weiss, Dr. Fairy Fingers, the BDC certified coach, the master of disaster, the queen of dusting. I just held your hand for a health assessment. Yeah, you did. I am, I'll tell you right now, I don't like health assessments. I don't like people taking my blood. Um, don't really like needles being stuck in my body, period. Uh, that's the just not a fan. So thank you so much you for great. thank you. I well thank you. I did do great, guys. I didn't pass out. I didn't even get the sweaty lip. Um, but we did it for the possibility of money. We did it because of money, and that's what we're talking about today: is people's relationship with money, keeping up with the Benjamins. Um, for those of you that have tumultuous relationships with money, for those of you that have a weird stigmatism around money, I totally understand it. You know, some people have been brought up to think that money is evil, that rich people suck, that people that own corporations have nothing but corporate greed and they just want to get they want make they want to make more and more money and leave everybody by the wayside. Um yeah, I think there are some people like that. I think there are some people like Scrooge McDuck who just swim in their um mm-hmm. their vat of gold coins and give themselves concussions every day and live horrible mo- miserable lives. And the majority of people, though, that have a lot of income are actually very charitable, very loving people, very happy people, very positive people. Um, And I feel that most people that have lots of success, and I don't mean just monetarily, I think that is one of the biggest connotations in, in with success is that people assume that you mean that you mean money right away that you mean, well, you must have XYZ amount of money in your bank account, you must have xyz amount of money you know so you can buy a ferrari but that's not what success is it depends on how you define it in your head but more importantly is i think people have a most people have a very glass glass half full type since i mean glass half empty type sensation about um money and they live in a vacuum where they don't like to spend it and they don't like to use it they don't like to put it into motion. And I think that is one of the biggest areas that people really need to work on is being able to take money and being able to know that if you let it go, it comes back. We just talked about this in our C3 yes, group. Yes, you did. In our C3 coffee group. connection and collaboration. Talked and about it in BDC Underground with students. It was and, super important yep. for, for money mindset. And I challenge everybody to go through kind of a, a worksheet. I had a set of questions. Um, if you want those set of questions, let us know. Yeah, link it. Um, actually, comment in the comments below or send us an email. And um, Julie, Dr. Julie can get you those questions right away. But it was some of the original, like the beginning is like, what was your first, what was your first um memory. reminder or memory of money growing mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. and that is that memory is what can elicit all the different responses for you when the topic of money can come up um and we were cognizant of that and then when we had kids we wanted to make sure that our kids had an entirely different type of money mindset an entirely different type of money upbringing than what we had I think we've been doing pretty good at that. Well, yesterday you brought up a really cool story about your grandpa Carl, who was a very impactful man in my life. I loved your grandpa. He was such a wonderful person. In fact, he was the first person that I had asked if I could marry you. Mm -hmm. I asked your grandpa before I asked your dad. 
And, um, you know, your dad told me I seemed like a good guy. Your grandpa didn't even grill me. He just said you would be perfect for Julie and that I, what I, he didn't understand what I was waiting for. Um, but the story you told about your grandpa with Peyton and Brecken, I think you should talk about that because I think that is always been impactful on them and what he used to do with them with money. So the story was we, if we'd be camping or my, my grandpa would be over to the house mm -hmm. and there'd be either we'd be have like a little swimming pool. Bottom line, it doesn't necessarily matter the whole, the whole backdrop, right? But Peyton would see and find these gold coins or silver dollars in the grass. And then she would go and find one and she'd be like, look what I found. And as she was bending over to pick up that one coin, my grandpa would flip another one, you know, into the air and it would land in the grass at a different spot. And then she'd be like, look at, here's another one. They're mm -hmm. just raining money. And he's like, look at everywhere you turn, you can find more of this. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of like a, an aha for us, right? Cause I didn't, I don't recall having that growing mm -hmm. up. Um, but that she got to experience that just of thinking that, yes, there's going to be more, it would show up. And our son is amazing at that. Brecken's ridiculous with money. He's very, very, I don't want to even say lucky. He just mm -hmm. knows when he's going to hit. He just knows when he's going to make money. He just knows when he's going to hit jackpots. But and he's he is also very the first confident. if we see a needy person mm -hmm. or somebody... Oh looks like they're yes. in need or mm -hmm. it's always a uh, hey i have i have five dollars in my wallet or i have or 20 how bucks can we, how can we help how, them? how can can you just give this to that person mm -hmm. so it makes sense that he's always just giving from the love in his heart mm -hmm. that that money is just automatically going to come back so it's not luck that we're walking and he finds a 50 dollars bill on the ground or a yep. hundred dollar bill on the ground that came back because he let that money go in the first place well he always has money just showing up like every day every every time we go do something his he always has always 20 full. bucks in his wallet his wallet's always full and he's always told me he tells me that stuff he's like my wallet's not empty dad and that's just what he says and it makes me giggle it makes me laugh and it makes me proud that he knows that you can just make money at any time and that is one thing that people i think in general have been lied to manipulated and told that you can't make money unless you work extremely hard to get it. And actually money shouldn't be that hard to get. You should love what you do to be able to get the money. You shouldn't have to completely work yourself to the bone to get money because that's when money actually causes detriment. It causes anxiety. It causes negativity. When you see that you need it to do what you love to do or that money, you trying to get money is actually keeping you from doing what you love to do, then we're in, then we're not congruent. Then we're in the wrong area. Then we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing because I love chiropractic. I love taking care of people. I love teaching people chiropractic. I love teaching students. I love, we love working with business entrepreneurs more than just chiropractors and watching them flourish and make more and more money. Like we love that stuff. That's why making money to us isn't negative because we love doing what we do because the more money that we can make means that we get to impact our community mm -hmm. we get to leave a legacy mm -hmm. we get to give back to everybody else that mm -hmm. has supported us yes so i think that's that that underlying tone of well why do you want to make money is it for for you to keep it all mm -hmm. or why why do we need to be successful why do we need to continue to care for people and mm -hmm. why do we always start additional businesses is so we have multiple streams of income so then we get to give back. Well, yeah, and I think then also giving back is key, but it takes stress off of other verticals of income. And that, for some people, can't wrap their head around either because they've been taught that you've all been taught, every one of us, if you have had a parent that has worked an eight to five job, you can't even say nine to five, it's eight to five, eight to six, your parents, my dad at one point worked three jobs when I was in high school. He hauled gas, he worked for Quick Trip, and he had his full-time job with the DNR being a fire technician. And my mom was working at the hospital and they were trying to provide for three kids. And I look at that and my dad, my dad did whatever he could to help support his family. But the thing with that is that he 
taught himself that he needed to work hard to get what he was supposed to get. He grew up on a farm. He was working nonstop since he was probably five years old, either milking cows or driving tractor or doing whatever needed to be done on the farm. But the key is with that, as I watched my dad work extremely hard and wear himself out and do whatever he could, but never actually got the concepts of being financially literate. Never actually got the concepts of how do we take the money that we've worked so hard for and make it work for us. And I remember having conversations with my dad and my mom about financial literacy and just what are we going to do with this or how can I help you with that? And they looked at me like I was a genius and I'm not. I've just, we've paid a lot of money to learn how to make more money or use our money to work for us instead of against us. Right. So you have to put the hard work in yes, typically to get something started. Mm -hmm. But I think that's where, I don't know if it's jealousy, but it's the, when people look at you like, oh, I'm busting my ass to do this. And I'm mm -hmm. only making, I'm only bringing this woman a paycheck. When we have these new generations that they're like, well, they're just sitting at home and doing video games and, you know, they're not working hard and they're making this amount of money. And I think that's where there's such a disproportionate, um, like our cultures aren't understanding each other. Well, there's more millionaires under 25 right now than there ever has been in world history, ever, ever. And then you've got the baby boomer generation that now is going into Social Security, retiring and completely putting a tax on the system. But the issue is, is that there's not enough people out there to feed Social Security and tax. It's not that Social Security has been spent. There's not enough people out there now supporting. to kick into the system and support it for the people that they were supporting prior. So not to go off on that tangent, I don't want to, but understanding that mentality and that mindset, I think it's amazing that there's a lot of young 20-year-olds with, with millions of dollars. The reason why is because it changes their money mindset. They can be more philanthropic with it. They can use it more. Money can bring you happiness. Money doesn't buy you happiness unless you know where to shop, which I find kind of funny. And that's a tongue-in-cheek comment. But more importantly is understanding what you can do with the money, understanding what you can do to help people, understanding how you can give, but then also roll up your sleeves and give too. I think people have the ability to donate their time, their money, and their talents. talents. And yep. So talents and treasures. So treasures and money go together. Talent is a big thing being able to teach and then time being able to give back and help. So those those are avenues to be able to give back the wealth that you have. Because I've always, you know, you've heard it, like that guy has a wealth of knowledge. Well then he's gonna share his wealth if you just ask him. I've never met I've never met a, a person that has that's a millionaire that isn't willing to help somebody. If you ask them the questions, they will ask. ask. The first millionaire I ever met was Bob Tunick. The first millionaire I ever met. And to be quite honest with you, he was an open book if I just asked questions. And then if I just listened. And, and, and I gained a wealth of knowledge from that man by just asking questions. And then just listening to how he dealt with people and employees. And, and, but then after that, we've met people that, that, that are crazy wealthy, but they're all willing to help. Just nobody wants to ask. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is about that is that we've talked about giving and receiving and saying thank you and you're welcome. But being able to allow that person then to take their education that they've learned, that they've invested in, that they've put tons of money behind, and then be able to give that back to you. That, 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 that's the exchange. That's full service. That's exchange for them. Mm -hmm. That's exchange. And I think another thing that when we talk about money and finances that can control a lot of angst is a spousal relationship or your, your partner's relationship whether it's a business partner or a spouse, if you're in business with somebody, that's a relationship that you need to understand and understand both sides of the equation when it comes to money. But even more importantly is what does your spouse and or significant other, who you're living with, your roommate, whatever you want to go about that way, I say it's marriage and spouse, what does your spouse feel about money? I think this is like when I do lots of with my coaching clients, Mm -hmm. This is one of the biggest hurdles to overcome. It's a hard hurdle. Because like I'm clearly I'm I'm coaching the person that has the abundant mindset that mm -hmm. wants and looks for well, that. Well they want they have the coach they want the coaching. Right? But it's the other it's the significant other that has the different money mindset. Mm -hmm. And like the conversations that come up, well, how do I change it? You can't change it. You just need to understand where that thought process is coming from 
and then how can we engage at that point? And it's not like it's it's not trickery, it's it's not anything like that, but it's understanding that they're just coming from a whole different world. Mm -hmm. Are they open to a different money mindset or how can we work within their parameters of both people being successful with that mindset? Well, it's a mindset. Usually one has a mindset of there's never enough. And then the other person has the mindset that there's more than enough. And case in point, Brecken, more than enough, always, unless there's like Cheetos. And then Peyton, Peyton's kind of in the middle where there's not enough versus there is enough. That's the girl sitting in her bedroom right now with a jar packed full of money and doesn't spend it at all. And Brecken is just constantly using his wallet. And then in a spousal relationship, it's the same thing. Somebody in that relationship is a never enough mindset. And the other side of it is, is there's another person that there's always enough. We should spend that money. And when you can create the balance, which is key, the balance back and forth, but to have a conversation about how is this going to affect us both financially and it spiritually. Should, it shouldn't do right? material harm. Right. It should never. No, you're 100% correct. It should never do material harm at all. And that is one of the biggest things that most people cannot focus on is the fact that they, one may do, one may spend money and it's seen as an offense. It's like you spent that, you took that away from us. When it was $3 for a cup of coffee, but that $3 or $5 for a cup of coffee may have actually enlightened their day and made them a better person and help them out more. So to not do to not do material harm to the family. So if you went and got that cup of coffee, but if you came back and it changed your whole day and it can mm -hmm. impact everybody else around you, it's yes, we saw the material expense of purchasing that cup of coffee, but if it can enlighten and enrich everybody else that you're in connection with, yeah. Then that's a good That's the key. Investment. That's the key. And I think that, again, coming back to money and understanding wealth is never being afraid to give it, but also have the conversations and to make sure both sides understand that when I'm doing this, it is that kind of thing like, I'm doing this for us, mm. but I got a bowling ball and but you don't so, bowl. But, but you said to always give, but it's also mm -hmm. important that you have to be open to receive. Yeah, to receive it money has, from it people has to too. Come it has back. to go So when somebody ways. offers, like so if you say, Here's ten dollars. Go ten dollars isn't gonna get any nails done, but say like you give me fifty bucks and you say you know head over to the store or go get your nails done. By me saying no, I don't want to do that doesn't allow that money to come back to you because mm -hmm. you're trying to give it mm -hmm. so that other person needs to be open to receive. Yeah, and the other side of it is is it's fulfillment on both sides of the thing, right? I think one of the biggest misnomers that people talk about is that you have to live, um, always have to live below your means. Like, there, and I see this a lot with Christians as well, is being successful, being, um, being able to be a person that helps your community out, the nobility of success is actually frowned upon sometimes in the church. And I think Dave, Dave Ramsey has an amazing program right? Yeah. To help people get out of debt. Mm -hmm. But that's if you've done material harm to your family mm -hmm. and you need to get out of debt. Mm -hmm. Once you're out of debt, then we need to change that money mindset so that doesn't happen again. Yeah. And the other side, what I was, what I was getting at there in, is that if you go to church, if you're, if you're a Christian, it'll be frowned upon. Sometimes people will talk about how you have to live in poverty to be a good Christian, mm -hmm. how you have to give as much as you possibly can back to the church when really you should be giving it to your community and your church should be a part of it. Your church should be a part of it. Don't get me wrong. It absolutely should be giving back to help sustain. But what the question is, is that you need to really look at is what does your church do for the community that you're giving it back to? Are you just giving back money to pay for a new set of pews or are you giving money to the church to help the church do more good? And is what you're doing, is that helping with the betterment of the church? Is it helping with the betterment of where the money's going? Like, and, and you don't have to sit there and put a rider on, hey, I'm giving $3,000 this month. I want it to go to the air conditioning system. Like, 
It's not that. But a lot of the times we are told being Christian that if we don't live, if we live a boastful life, and what I mean by that is that if we're too proud, if we're too arrogant, that we're not being a good Christian. And I don't think that's the case. I think being proud but not having a love of money is key. You don't have to love it, but you have to love to use it to help everyone around you. And that's the absolute key of it. Does that make sense? Did I go down a route you weren't okay with? No? Okay. Because I think that that's something that a lot of people that are Christian deal with is that they're afraid to be successful because they may think that it's going to be looked down upon. When really the more successful you are, the more help you can do. The more you can do for your community, the more help you can provide, the more people you can help because you're sharing your times, talents, and treasures. Because that's what got you the treasure in the first place, your time and your talent, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you have anything else you would like to add? No. Nope. Dr. Fairy Fingers? No? Nope. Okay. If you guys need anything, reach out to us. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We, Dr. Julie and I love talking about money. We love talking about money mindset with people to help them just improve their thought process around being successful and what it actually, not what it takes, but just the mindsets you have to have to help it, right? All right, everybody, go out there, get it done. Have a great week. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.